Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to do our lineup build for the League of Legends slate, which starts in about 35 minutes. Um, so it's again, it's a very unique dynamic what, uh, with the, the two-day slates. As you guys know, or hopefully you know, if you followed yesterday, we got off to an extremely good start in the slate that started yesterday that ends today with the Hanwha BLG match, where we did play quite a bit of four mans with uh, WBG and including in the triumphant warrior. And today we have literally a hundred percent exposure on BLG. I don't think we have a single Hanwha lineup. Now, the reason for that part of it was that there was some degree of unsure of uh, insecurity with respect to whether Shun was going to be starting. So we took a chance that he would, um, and as a result, got probably some relatively lower ownership on BLG. It wasn't as we liked BLG particularly. As a matter of fact, I mean, if anything, the lean was towards Hanwha Life, but just because of that Shun um, un, you know, uncertainty, I thought it was worth the, uh, the, the, the risk. Now, it seems as though he's going to be starting, so that risk doesn't that, – that risk already has – I don't want to say already played out because he certainly could get subbed if they lose games one or two. But you know what? If they lose games one and two, we're going to probably lose anyway. So it doesn't really make a difference. Um, so that's good. But that shouldn't impact what we do today because now that risk of BLG, of, of Shun being out is less dramatic. So you're not going to get as you know, much of an ownership discount on BLG. The other thing I want to think about, which is what I – talked about yesterday was maybe doing a little bit of hedging here because I mean we got a lot we got a lot of equity going on BLG winning. Um and I don't think it's the end of the world to to hedge in the sports betting market here. So if you put some of this in you know in the state kings or you have yourself a lot of BLG exposure, it's not the worst idea to go into say bet online or something like that and and make a bet either on Hama Life minus the 149 or maybe I don't know. Maybe uh Hanwha minus one and a half maps. Um because as I've mentioned, the like the the Trump and Warrior, for example, I, I think I could even win that with Hanwha Life winning, as long as they don't win by too much. But at the very least, I think I should probably Throw in something on Hanwha Life uh, minus the you know minus the one forty nine or something. Another way you could do it is you go in at, and play the over. So you play over four and a half. This way, again, if Hanwha Life wins, they're not going to smash or anything like that. But I just think it's probably safer just to go play Hanwha Life here. So we're we're going to do that, I and mean, we have we have quite a bit of equity here on BLG winning. Um, now, again, just because BLG winning doesn't mean that we win because there are people that have BLG foremans and, and things like that. But we do have quite a bit of equity there. So we are going to do this. Um, now, this kind of ties into another project that I hope to work on one day. I mean, I probably won't. But the, the idea of, of of figuring out what the amount is you're supposed to hedge if you want to take some amount of, off the table in DFS. Now, again, what that requires is you to be able to value your your uh your lineups efficiently, and that's very difficult. Um, but maybe one day that will happen. So let's make, I don't know, we'll play 600, maybe. We'll bet 600 to win four. I think that's, I think that's reasonable. I mean, that probably takes all of our risk off the table, so maybe we don't want to do that. Let's, we should have something going on. So let's, let's play, I don't know, 400 to win 200, 400 to win 268. Or maybe we should play 600. I don't know. Uh, something. In, yeah, we'll do it. We'll be a little bit wimpy. We'll play 600 to cash for 1,000. And so that's that. Okay. Now, separately, let's figure out what we're going to do this slate. The one that starts with HLE, BLG, um, and then progresses to top esports T1 tomorrow. The, the unfortunate reality is I don't have too much of a lean on either of these teams. So we're going to probably play this pretty close to the vest and not force anything in. Um, and we're just going to kind of let the projections and the Sims just kind of, you know, dictate what we do here. So here are the, hold on. 
I have to pause you for just a second. I'll be right back. Um, sorry. So this was the general build before we ran the Sims. I'd like to look at this first. Um, I would be getting 100% top esports and Hanwha. Just because they always seem to default. Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I was about to say it defaults to the favorite, but no, it actually top esports because of the way the salaries work out just become the better play. Um, but again, this is going to be would end up being the you know the highest owned um, combination. So that's why we do run the Sims to hopefully compare our lineups to what you know we believe the field is going to do. Let's see if we get any kind of changes. Yeah, so here, it's actually a pretty decent distribution here between Hanwha, T1, Top Esports, and BLG. Um, but what's interesting is that there are, wow, I might just go with this because you're having 18 of the 36 lineups being 4-3s and, and half of them being 4-2s. And... When you get to this organically, I mean, I have found that it's uh, it's pretty profitable to play this way. You know, I I used to kind of fight this. I used to literally just just lock in four or three stacks, but I just saw too many variations where, you know, a, a random one off just kind of comes in, and you have to really appreciate how important it is to get that unique lineup as opposed to, you know, duping 72 times, for example. Um, so the, in my new opinion, the more four twos you get organically without forcing them in the better. So we're just kind of going to probably roll with this. Um, now the unfortunate reality is going to be hard to tell what to root for off the bat. So what we could we could do we made min uniques too, um, to diversify a little bit, and again we have some amount of all of this. Uh, what we, if we did min uniques three? Like how bad would that be? It would probably be terrible, right? Yeah, you can't you can't get to that in a six game slate really. But I think this is pretty fair, and and not to be too wimpy, but it does hedge a little bit against our current BLG exposure, putting us in, a, in an interesting position where we don't know exactly who to root for, which is fine. Um, so let's first, uh, and I think we should just put these right in, just like this. We'll put our top lineup into the into the Triumphant Warrior. And, um, but this one, I don't know if I need to put this in the Triumphant Warrior, but I guess you could. I don't think you need to put four twos into the Trump and Warrior. I, I just don't. So let let's let's first put all these into the into the uh the shock blast. So we know that's that's done. So 35 lineups into there. Boom. And then what we'll do is may, maybe what we'll do, we could probably resim this. Yeah, let's go back and resim this just for the for the triumphant warrior. Let's let's do a custom one. It's just for easier for me. Triumphant warrior custom. It's only you know again. It's only going to be. Oops. Triumphant warrior, and we'll we'll play what twelve people in it. Twenty five, twenty. Same thing. Save these settings. we'll go back into here and we'll run this again. We could play the, we could play a four, two in the triumphant warrior. And if that's the case, you're, you're definitely wanting a five game series. Let's just see what we get. 
And then I apologize for this, but so yesterday I was unable to kind of display who we had. We'll, we'll take care of that this time. Um, okay. Uh, wait, what happened to the triumphant warrior? Hmm. Well, we'll just go with how can I resim this with the triumphant warrior? And I'll tell you what I can do. I can go back into here as someone pointed out and just kind of fix this. And we'll do entrance. This we'll do it here. 12, 25, 20. And then we'll resim it. Oops. Contest sim. Uh, oh, we do have one for a try. Oops. And this will be four man top esports, little three man Hanwa. And we'll just do that. We'll save that one to the Triumphant Warrior. And then we should be off and running. So we need BLG for yesterday's Triumphant Warrior, but we need Hanwa for today's. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. Let's just let's just confirm who we have here and what to root for. In the Triumphant Warrior, we have oops, I'm gonna edit. Four man top esports, and that's all going tomorrow. So we won't know anything. Just what you're going to be rooting for is kind of a low-scoring on my life game uh, today for this Triumphant Warrior. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to really try to play close to the vest, if you get a really low-scoring like Hanwha win, that actually fits everything because you you'll win. I'll win my my side bet. You still might be able to get a win at the Triumphant Warrior, but you'll lose all the shock blast equity from today. Um, and we do have more Hanwha than BLG going to tomorrow in the Shock Blast as well. But we're we have a lot of four twos and a lot of baloney, so it's going to be kind of hard to see how we're doing until after the match. But uh, yeah, I hope that uh, helps, and uh, good luck, everybody.